So I'm going to go ahead and go over chapter 6.3, which is solving multi-step inequalities. This is just going to take the ideas of a couple different things that we've already done and put them together. We have solved one-step inequalities. That's what we just got done doing in chapter 6.1 and 6.2. And we've solved multi-step equations in the past. So it's just going to take those two ideas and put them together. Well, let's take a look at an example problem. We've got 3x minus 7 is less than 8. So normally to solve this, what I would do is I would look and I would say, okay, well, what's happening here? Well, first I would multiply by 3 and then I would subtract 7 and that's going to get me here. But since I don't know what x is, I'm going to reverse my order of operations. So instead of normally I would first I would multiply by 3, then subtract 7. So I'm going to do the opposite of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 7 to both sides, which is going to give me 3x is less than 15. And then I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. And that's going to give me x is less than 5. And that's the solution to my inequality. For all values that are less than 5, if I plug them in here, it will make this entire statement true. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug in my numbers down here. Well, I've got 5, right? 5, put it right in the middle. Just put one lower than it, one above it. And then we'll go ahead and because it's uh, less than, we'll have an open circle. And it's going to shade in to the left. All right, let's try it. Let's look at another one. Here's another one. Negative 0.6 multiplied by the quantity of x minus 5, which is less than or equal to 15. Well, there's two different ways you could really do this problem. One is you could use the distributive property, where you take zero, negative 0 0.6 and you multiply it by x, and the same by negative 5 here. Um, or what you could do is you could look at, again, what would you do if you knew x? Well, if you knew x, you would take x, you'd subtract 5, then you'd multiply by negative 0 0.6. So let's reverse those order of operations. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide by negative 0 0.6 on both sides first. That's the first thing I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to be left with is just this x minus 5 part, which is going to be greater than or equal to negative 25. Now the sign switches because I divided both sides by a negative number. And from here you just add 5, and you get x is greater than or equal to negative 20. I'll go ahead and graph it. There are my numbers. It's going to be a closed circle. So I'm going to slide this in here. Okay, and remember, a common mistake people make is when they put this in, they put to negative 20, and then they'll put negative 19 here and negative 21 there. But that's really the opposite way that needs to be. Make sure you set your number line up correctly, and since it's greater than that, we'll go ahead and shade into the right. All right, well, what I want you to do is I want you to try these two problems, and you guys, you give it a, give it a shot. Um, do both of them, graph them, and then uh, you can unpause the video and uh, check your solutions. I'll walk through them. So go ahead and pause the video now, and you take a couple minutes to try it out. Okay, well, hopefully you have your solution done. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Well, here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. I'm going to have to reverse my inequality symbol because I divided it by negative 6. And I get 21 over 6. Let's go ahead and simplify that. The top and the bottom have a common factor of 3. So divide both those by 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph. Notice, I just put in 7 halves, 6 halves, 8 halves. I don't even need to necessarily um, put it into uh, a mixed number or simplify it. Really just I'm looking for, this needs to be simplified, but I just want to know that this is one lower than this, one, one higher than that. And it doesn't even have to be a whole number necessarily. So slide in solid dot, and we're talking about all the numbers that are greater than that. Oops, I got it. So we'll go ahead and drag this in here, and you shade to the right. Okay, next problem. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by, oops, this isn't cooperating, give me one second here, just get rid of this, okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 4, okay, and so I'm going to take negative 4 and multiply it by this whole side and multiply it by this whole side, and what I'm going to get here is I'm going to get just p minus 12, okay, and I had to reverse the inequality side because I multiplied both sides by a negative number, okay. And next thing I'm going to do, add 12 to both sides, and I'm left with p is less than 20. Go ahead and graph it, plop in your, <clears throat> your number line, and it's going to be an open circle. And we are going to shade in to the left. Okay, look good. All right, sometimes what's going to happen here is, is sometimes you're going to run into the situation where there are no uh, solutions or there are all solutions, okay? This is just like went back in 
um, when we were solving equations and sometimes you had the same amount of variables or you'd have the same line or uh, hopefully you remember that so <clears throat> go ahead and take a you can read this I don't need to read it for you since you can pause the video all right I'm gonna go the next one so here's a good equation so or an inequality let's solve it if possible so what they did here is they did the original uh, inequality then they did the distributive property and you should be able to see right away you have 14 X's on both sides and then if you subtract those and get rid of them you have 5 is less than negative 21 well that's just not true so there are no solutions because this statement is false there's nothing you can plug in here to make this uh, uh, to make this true right and the same idea here this is one where okay there's no way it could be false it doesn't matter whatever number you plug in here it's going to be false okay and it's really just in taking that same idea that we had <clears throat> from previous in the year and applying it to inequalities all right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a word problem here, and this will be the last problem to go over in the video. All right, go ahead and read the problem. We're saving money for a summer camp that costs $1,910. You've saved $500 so far, and you have 15 more weeks to save the total amount. What are the possible average amounts of money that you can save per week in order to have a total of at least, oops, that's supposed to say $1,900. Let me go ahead and fix that. $1,910. Usually that's how much you want to have saved. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and why don't you pause the video and try to write an equation or an inequality that matches this entire word problem. So go ahead and pause the video and you try it. All right, well, let's see. This is what I came up with. Oh man, sorry, this video is not cooperating with me very much. So this is what I came up with. I came up with $1,910, okay? That is gonna be greater than or equal to 15W plus 500. All right, and actually, what I did here is I made a mistake. I accidentally, this should have been a less than or equal to sign because we know it's going to be at least 1910. All right, so it happens. Um, so we have, this is the total amount of money I want to save. This is how much I've already saved, and this is the how much I need to save remaining. Okay, and I want it to be at least, these two things to be at least. So that means at the, the equal to or greater than this amount. All right, well, let's go ahead. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going <clears> to, <throat> what I do is I'm going to subtract $500 because I want to know what's the average that I need to have left. And I have to fix this symbol again because I made a mistake. All right, so I have $1,410. This is how much I need to save, or how much I need to make over the course of 15 weeks. Well, if I want it to be an average, that means I need to divide. So, let's divide both sides by 15. You're going to find out that every week you need to make an average of $94 oops, or more. Okay? So this is what you'd have. You'd have $94 or more. Um, okay? Go ahead, you're gonna work on some of the skill practice. These are the skill problems. Go ahead and work on these um, tonight. Have them ready for class tomorrow, and that way we can go over some of the word problems in class. Okay, good luck.